The cell membrane controls traffic into and out of the cell it surrounds. Like all biological membranes, the cell membrane exhibits selective permeability. That is, it allows some substances to cross it more easily than others. This ability of the cell to discriminate in its chemical exchanges with its environment is fundamental to life, and it is the cell membrane that makes this selectivity possible. In this video, you will learn about the structure of membranes and how the outermost membrane of a eukaryotic cell, the cell membrane or plasma membrane, controls the passage of substances. However, the same general principles of membrane traffic also apply to the many varieties of internal membranes that partition the eukaryotic cell. Membranes are found around the entire cell, the mitochondria, lysosomes, nucleus, and many other organelles. Membranes serve to separate the contents of a cell or organelle from its surroundings. Here you can see a lysosome, an enzyme-containing organelle, as it is digesting an old, worn-out organelle. The membrane surrounding the digestive enzymes is necessary as a barrier between the digestive enzymes and the rest of the cell. The cell membrane is made up of four main components, carbohydrates, cholesterol, phospholipids, and proteins. Lipids form the barrier that separates the inside of a cell from the outside of a cell. The phospholipids are arranged in a double layer called a lipid bilayer. A pure phospholipid bilayer would allow a very limited number of substances to pass through. Water can diffuse across because it is so small, but this is a slow process. Each phospholipid is made up of a phosphate group and two fatty acid tails. The hydrocarbon tails are nonpolar unable to bond with water and are hydrophobic hydro water phobic fear the polar phospholipid head has an affinity for water and thus is hydrophilic when phospholipids are added to water they form assemblies that shield their hydrophobic portions from the water see here the formation of a lipid monolayer Membranes are not static sheets of material locked rigidly in place. Most of the lipids and many of the proteins can drift about laterally. The cell membrane must be a dynamic structure if the cell is to grow and respond to environmental changes. Besides allowing diffusion, membrane fluidity also allows proteins that undergo shape changes to function properly. Cholesterol is a lipid and is found between the phospholipids of the bilayer. It allows the phospholipids to pack more tightly to maintain the right fluidity of the membrane. Cell membranes contain proteins which provide several functions to the cell. Some proteins and their attached carbohydrates help immune cells recognize them as their own type. Transport proteins aid in the movement of substances into and out of the cell. We will cover the different types of transport proteins later on in this video. Receptor proteins bind specific substances, such as hormones, in the cell's environment, which can change cell function. Structural proteins are attached to microfilaments in the cytoskeleton, which ensures stability of the cell. A particular membrane protein can simultaneously provide more than one of these functions. As seen previously, the extracellular surface of the cell membrane is decorated with carbohydrates attached to components, producing glycolipids and glycoproteins. These linked carbohydrates consist of chains of 15 or fewer sugar molecules and are termed oligosaccharides. Oligosaccharides can confer stability to proteins, provide enzymatic function, comprise a receptor domain, or give a cell identity, for example, distinguishing self from non-self. Phospholipids and membrane proteins are not simply randomly distributed in cell membranes. 
Cell membranes are a complex mix of lipids and proteins designed to perform the functions cells require. To better coordinate these functions, the membrane is able to subcompartmentalize its components. Lipid rafts are assemblies of sphingolipid, cholesterol, and proteins that unite as one group, forming platforms that function in membrane signaling and trafficking. Lipid rafts are more ordered and tightly packed than the surrounding bilayer, but float freely in the membrane bilayer like wooden rafts on the ocean. One of the main functions of the cell membrane is to regulate the exchange of substances. Movement across the cell membrane that does not require energy from the cell is called passive transport. To understand how molecules diffuse across the membrane, it is important to understand what is meant by diffusion. Take the example of a sugar cube dropped in water. Particles of a substance in a solution move around randomly. If there is a concentration gradient in the solution, the substance will move from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration, aka down the concentration gradient. This is called diffusion. Eventually, the concentration of substance in solution will reach equilibrium, where the concentration of a substance is equal throughout the space. It is diffusion that propels many substances to passively enter or leave cells. They move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration until equilibrium is reached. Water molecules are small and can diffuse through the cell membrane. Diffusion of water through a selectively permeable membrane is called osmosis. Like other forms of diffusion, osmosis involves the net movement of a substance, water, down its concentration gradient. The direction of water movement across the cell membrane depends on the relative concentration of free water molecules in the cytoplasm and in the fluid outside the cell. There are three possibilities for the direction of water movement. One, water moves out, causing the cell to shrink. A solution which is added to cells that causes this is called a hypertonic solution. The fluid outside the cell has a lower concentration of free water molecules than the fluid inside the cell, so water diffuses out of the cell. Two, water moves in, thus the cell swells. This solution is hypertonic. The fluid outside the cell has a higher concentration of free water molecules than the fluid inside the cell, so water diffuses into the cell. Three, if no net water movement occurs, the solution is isotonic. The fluid outside and inside the cell have the same concentration of free water molecules, so water diffuses into and out of the cell at equal rates. Specialized membrane water transporters called aquaporins are found in tissues with high water permeability. These proteins freely permit movement of water across the cell membrane and allow for higher levels of permeability in certain cells. Proteins can help molecules across membranes, either by forming channels or by carrying them across the membrane. Most ions and polar molecules cannot pass across the cell membrane because they cannot pass through the nonpolar interior of the lipid bilayer. However, such molecules can cross the cell membrane when they are aided by transport proteins. This is a channel protein. Here you can see its atomic structure. It is composed of carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. Channels provide polar passageways through which ions and small polar molecules can move across the cell membrane. During transit, the channel hardly changes its shape, if it does at all. Another transport protein used to transport specific substances, such as amino acids and sugars, are carrier proteins. This method of passive transport is called facilitated diffusion. The carrier protein binds to specific substances on one side of the cell and releases them on the other side. The carrier has to change its shape during this process. If the substrate is being transported down its concentration gradient, the process may not require extra energy. In this case, it is called facilitated diffusion. 
Diffusion of the substrate can occur without the carrier protein, but it may take a very long time. It is helped or facilitated by the carrier protein. In contrast to facilitated diffusion, active transport is the pumping of solutes against their concentration gradient. The sodium-potassium pump is one specific case of active transport. The pump changes between two shapes or conformations in a pumping cycle that moves three sodium ions out of the cell for every two potassium ions pumped into the cell. ATP powers the changes in conformation. By pumping sodium ions out of the cell, it lowers the cell's concentration of sodium. Thus, less water enters the cell by osmosis. The cell membrane is the edge of life, the boundary that separates the living cell from its non-living surroundings. The structure and corresponding functions of the cell membrane are fundamental to the life of every living cell.